morning, everyone. As you're filing in, we're just going to wait a couple of minutes until we have uh, everyone join us. Thank you for coming today. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. We're going to wait just a couple of minutes for everyone to join us. Good morning, everyone. We'll wait a few more moments. Feel free to go ahead and put um, the country that you're joining us from in the chat, and we can get to see where everyone's from today. Excellent, it's great to see everybody. We have people from Malawi, South Africa, South Africa, Guatemala, Uganda, Lesotho, fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Susan Melnick and I am the Graphics and Communication Specialist here with ASAP. And we're gonna to continue to have people file in over the next little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started with some introductory slides. So welcome to today's webinar. Um, we thank USAID for helping us put these on, um, and we're really glad to have a wonderful group today joining us. Today's webinar is supporting prevention and clinical outcomes through social and behavior change, and we'll be discussing technical guidance and case studies. So a few quick little notes before we begin. Um, feel free to go ahead and put where you're from in the chat so that we can get to see where everyone is joining us from. Um, we wanted to remind you that there is a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. You'll see the icon right at the bottom, and that's what we're going to use today for all of our questions. If you've been a part of our ASAP webinars in the past, you know that's how we like to do it because it keeps everything well organized. So if you wouldn't mind, please using the Q&A instead of the chat today. It's very helpful for us. But feel free to use the chat to communicate with other attendees. That's perfectly fine. Uh, we do have three polls today. We're going to start with a baseline poll right at the start um, when the presentation begins. Um, and then we have another one at the end of the presentation and a final closeout um, quick little poll that we're going to run. So keep an eye out for those. They're going to pop up on your screen. And today's webinar, as usual, we're going to send out an email with a link to the recording. So it'll be available online tomorrow and we'll make sure that you get that email. So just a reminder that we've done um, 64 webinars for USAID as part of ASAP, which is um, you know, really fantastic that you've all been able to join us. We've had 13,000 attendees and it's been a really wonderful um, project to be able to work on. So thank you all so much. Many of these webinars and the ideas for them came from our local partners. So we wanted to thank you again. And we do have um, all of, most of those webinars are online, so you can view them at any time. And I'll go ahead and put the link in the chat in just a few moments, so you can access those. We do have another webinar coming up on January 26th, and this one is gonna be Program and Data Quality Assurance and Improvement. Um, this is a repeat of a USAID webinar that we've done in the past, but it'll have updated information and guidance. And I'll make sure that I include a link uh, for how to register for that in the chat in a few moments. Our webinars are available in most cases in three languages. So most of them start in English and then we translate them into French and Portuguese. So you can also filter for that on the website. And many of the webinars also, in addition to the recording, have the presentation slides. So if there's anything that you missed today during the webinar, you can go back and look through the slides in more detail. 
And as always, we're always listening. So whatever topics you're thinking of that you would love to see in a webinar that would really help your organization, please feel free to put it in the chat. And I always take notes and make sure that we um, add those into webinars as we go. So thank you so much. So today's presenters, we have uh, quite a large group with us today, which is wonderful. So from USAID's Office of HIV AIDS, we have Jacqueline Devine, which is the Senior SBC Advisor, Esther Broad, Senior SBC Advisor as well, Suzanne Leclerc Madlala, apologize, um, also an advisor, and Caitlin Powers, who is a program analyst. And we have three local partners joining us today. Uh, Johnny Selicourt from Panos Institute. He's an SBCC specialist. Another SBCC specialist, this time from TMARC, is Godfrey Mwanakaluya and Beloved Manasides. Oh, I apologize if I spelled that one wrong. Beloved, please feel free to correct us when you're presenting. Uh, project coordinator for ANOVA Men's Health Services. And we are so glad to have the local partners joining us today and so thankful for the USA team for including them. All right, so our first poll is going to begin and I'm gonna go ahead and hand things over. So feel free to mind launching that poll for us. Thank you. Perfect, and the poll's online. Everybody, you'll have one minute. Excellent, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll and we'll share the results here. And Jacqueline, let me know if you're able to see the results. Yes, thank you for that, Susan. <clears throat> So thank you very much. Uh, I'm Jacqueline Devine. Uh, thank you, Susan, for the introduction. Bonjour tout le monde. Hi, everybody. Caribou, buenos dias. I could go on. Uh, so excited you could uh, make the time to join us today. Uh, we wanted to, to give you a bit of back, backdrop for this particular session. And this is uh, all sort of excerpts and some of the speeches and notes that our administrator, USAID, Administrator Power has really uh, shared on um, promoting the power and the importance of behavioral science in our work. So this has been very energizing uh, to see, uh, and we hope that this will further elevate um, social and behavior change, particularly in the PEPAR environment, which you know has sometimes its cha uh, challenges. We're happy to see that at baseline, our poll seems that uh, there's some agreement on where uh, social and behavior change can play a role. So we'll we'll take an end line uh, later on, but it seems that we're standing we're starting from a very good uh, good point. Next slide. So here are our objectives for today's sessions. We really want to highlight how SBC supports the entire HIV continuum. And you can kind of see that from the, from the nature of the poll. We'll have three amazing case studies. Uh, we're going to go travel to Haiti, Tanzania, and South Africa. And that, that will really be the heart of our session today. And then we're also going to provide some broad technical guidance and, and key principles. We don't have time in 90 minutes to do a master class on SBC, but we really want to distill what we've heard from the three presenters and, and sort of highlight some, some key principles for you to take into account as we move forward uh, with, uh, with our programs. Next slide. 
So here, uh, well, well, in terms of a run of show, I'll give you a little more background and then Esther will really highlight how social and behavior change supports the client's journey across the continuum. And then, as I said, the three case studies are really the heart and soul of this uh, session. We'll hear about U Equals U, the media campaign in Haiti, then we'll travel to Africa and hear about SBC community engagement to support healthy behaviors among PLHIV. And then we'll travel to South Africa to learn more about Coach and Pilo, applying the principles of effective SBC to reach and retain men on HIV treatment. And then uh, Suzanne uh, on our team will uh, reflect back on key principles that we've heard and summarize these uh, lessons. And then Q&A, hopefully, as, as, um, as uh, Susan said, you have to use the Q&A uh, box on the bottom of the screen. We're not going to be all addressing them. Please don't be frustrated if we don't get to them in real time. You sort of want to curate them and categorize them, and we'll we'll really keep some session, some time at the end uh, of the session to to answer them. And then when you do get the PDF uh, from this presentation, you'll see some slides that we're not presenting today due to lack of time. They have some examples of SBC across the continuum, and they have some links to uh, resources which we hope will be useful. So next slide. So just a, a bit more of background. Um, there's no SDC section uh, in, in COP guidance. We wish there were uh, perhaps in the future. So we have to kind of find snippets here and there. But so the, so the guidance that we're talking about here is really drawn from best practice in the field of SBC and the recommendations that we have based on, on the technical assistance that we provide uh, to country teams and, and IPs and local partners. Um, SBC is traditionally associated associated with prevention and demand generation, um, but really as there are opportunities to apply the same tools and approaches throughout the continuum of care. And that's what our three case studies really want to, to highlight. And it seems that on the baseline, you also, uh, you also believe that. So we're very happy to see um, this shared uh, sort of community around that. Um, SBC has a lot of terms. It gets confusing because you hear about IEC, Information Education Communication, SBCC, BCC, Health Promotion, Health Communication. It's all in the same family. And uh, in the Global Health Bureau, we define social and behavior change as the suite of interventions that seek to change health seeking behaviors and the norms that support them. And the interventions can be grounded in a number of, of disciplines, SBCC, marketing, advocacy, behavioral economics, which is this, this emerging field and human centered design. Next slide. So how do we, what do we mean by behavior change? Uh, so we, we defined it here and I, I sort of highlight the, the third bullet here, which behavior change is defined when a new practice uh, is adopted. For example, a client is initiating treatment, an undesirable behavior is abandoned. For example, adolescents or people who have pill fatigue take ARV holidays, well, a behavior change that we want to observe is for these clients to stop taking ARV holidays. An existing behavior is maintained, so adherence to treatment is actually considered a behavior change. Uh, it sounds a little uh, unusual, but, but it is a behavior that we need to focus on or resume. We all know our loss to follow-up clients who have interrupted treatment. We want them to restart uh, treatment. So just to sort of really un uh, explain what the contours of, of behavior change can be. Next slide. So uh, that's sort of what I said, uh, you know, all the different terms that we, uh, that we can see in our field. Next slide. This really shows what a little bit of the evolution. When I started it uh, as a condom social marketer in the, in the mid nineties, the paradigm was really around IEC, information, education, communication. And it really stresses the importance of knowledge. And, and sometimes that's important. Knowledge is has its place. 
uh, but over time, the, the field has kind of progressed to, to evolve to social and behavior change communication, which is a little more systematic. It recognizes some of the theory, uh, psychology, economic theory, uh, sociology, and research to bring about uh, change, not just at the individual level, but also at the community and, and societal. And it recognizes that it's more than just about knowledge. Is it about self-efficacy? Is it about norms? Is it about intentions, beliefs? So it has a wider suite of, of uh, factors that we uh, go beyond knowledge. And as just a little tweak in the language, we've kind of evolved to SBC. It's very similar to SBCC, but it just leaves the opportunity to use a wider range of interventions. Next slide. So I'm going to pass the, uh, the floor to uh, my colleague Esther, who will talk us through how SBC supports the entire continuum. Over to you, Esther. Thank you, Jacqueline, and uh, greetings, everyone, and Happy New Year. Uh, slide, please. So going back to one of the objectives of the webinar that Jacqueline emphasized at the beginning, we would like to uh, present or convey how SBC supports the entire continuum. So as you can see in these slides, and I'm not going to read everything because it's pretty crowded, but you will get a copy of the, of the presentation. We illustrated how SBC supports a client-centered approach, not only through the various areas of the continuum, but also across the majority of the MER indicators. This shows that um, has, SBC does not serve only as a tool for prevention or demand creation, but it's an effective uh, approach to link, for instance, newly diagnosed clients to treatment, address uh, zero discordant couples, raise awareness uh, around uh, test, testing, uh, support community-based uh, ART, change providers' behaviors and attitudes, um, and maybe bring more empathy so then they could communicate better with their clients or create demand uh, for viral load testing. Uh, slide, please. So here's another way um, to show the, the, the relevance of SBC uh, throughout the HIV continuum. So this model was developed by Johns Hopkins University, Center for Communication Programs. And originally this was uh, developed for family planning. And here uh, it illustrates how SBC comes in before during and after service delivery. So it may be a little small, but um, if you think about how SBC can be used beforehand, uh, it's again used to generate demand, create an enabling environment, or um, address supporting, supportive norms within society. During service delivery, SBC can help improve, as I just said, clients and provider interactions by maybe developing tools that empower clients. SBC can also address providers' behaviors, providers that may be, let's say, reluctant to uh, prescribing PrEP for young women and teenage girls, uh, or also who have not quite yet embraced TLD and um, as you know, treatment uh, among pregnant women. Finally, after service delivery, SBC can boost adherence to treatment or adherence to PrEP. Slide, please. So we have three panelists, as Jacqueline said, but right uh, before that, I would like to go through a series of country examples, very recent, that have used SBC along the HIV continuum. So first, the Valor Intervention, which was led by the RISE project in Nigeria to increase demand for HIV testing among men. Uh, the team used a human-centered design approach to gather insights and develop a virtual peer navigation platform. So it provided personalized support to men in their HIV client journey. Slide. Uh, in Mozambique, the Sawa Sawa project uh, addressed stigma through an integrated SBC approach, which included radio, uh, community dialogue, and community testing. Slide, please. 
Now, moving on to Zambia, the Discover Health project, which also used a human-centered design approach to gather insights from various uh, audiences among the youth uh, to create digital solutions promoting prep, uptake, and adherence. Slide, please. And now we are in Malawi. Uh, where um, the project looked at um, the MMC uptake among older men, and the team strengthened basically the interpersonal communication skills of community mobilizers to address barriers to behavior change. For instance, you know, um, they revised job aids um, to debunk the myths and misconceptions around the MMC. Slide, please. In Zambia, again, uh, Breakthrough Action applied human-centered design and behavioral economics uh, to develop a comprehensive privacy and confidentiality strategy, which included a refresher training for providers, a confidentiality pledge taken by providers, and a client-provider promise that was displayed in providers' offices. Slide, please. In Tanzania, this time, the University of California, Berkeley, uh, also used human-centered design and behavioral economics to profile clients' HIV journeys and inform solutions aimed at creating a social norm for continuity of treatment. Slide, please. And last but not least, uh, in Malawi and Zimbabwe, the Flip the Scripts uh, initiative uh, use strategic marketing and segmentation technique to reframe ARV and living with HIV in order to support adherence. So these are examples of applied SBC along the continuum, the HIV continuum for these past few years. But um, really, we're here to listen to our three panelists. So we will start with Johnny Sedicourt, who is an SBC specialist at Institut Panos in Haiti and you will present on the U equal U uh, media campaign. Then we will hear from Godfrey Mwanakulia, uh, who is also an SBC specialist with the TMARC project in Tanzania, and he's gonna present about SBC community engagement program to support healthy behavior along, uh, among uh, people living with HIV. And finally, we'll hear from Bilov Manaside, program coordinator with ANOVA in South Africa, and he will explain how the Coach and Pillow project applied the principles of effective SBC to reach and retain men on HIV treatment. Joni, all yours. Thanks there uh, for everyone. Um, my name is Joni from Haiti. I'm working for um, Palos Institute as an SBC specialist. Palos is currently implementing the U equals U media campaign. Um, um, in Haiti. And, uh, um, I, I won't be able to um, do it um, of my video with um, Okay, next slide, uh, slide please. Okay, good. Um, so as of 2022, Haiti is uh, still among the countries with the highest prevalence of HIV in the world. And, um, and unfortunately, according to UNIS data, Haiti is leading the Caribbean in terms of um, um, PLHIV. And when you look at, uh, uh, at those stats, um, um, in the slide, those stats speak volume even significant progress is being made in Haiti to control the evolution of the epidemic. Um, just look at the stats related to loss of the follow-up, which is um, um, 30,000 and people on ART will become LF, uh, LTFU are very concerning. So um, the observation is that much effort are needed to achieve in the second and the third pillar of 95% 90, goal of the HIV epidemic control um, in Haiti. Next slide, please.
And um, before launching the, com the campaign in 2020, Pilots Institute conducted a series of preparatory activities. Among them are some focus group across the targeted departments with PHLIV associations. And um, the, actually the findings showed that the driving forces that prevent PLHIV on ART, it, um, achieving viral load suppression and women on treatment, or stigma and, stigma and discrimination from the society, as well as within their own families, triggering constant worry and fear. Um, also, the, the, the persistent political violence in Haiti, the internal migration, sometimes directly related to, to the political turmoil, as it, it is happening now, if you are uh, you, um, 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 watching the news on, on, on TV or listening to the news and, and radio, you know that in Haiti, uh, we, ha we have a, a big problem now with uh, um, um, violence and, and kidnapping and every um, bad stuff. So all the stuff triggered constant worry and fear. And um, yeah, there was also the lack of knowledge about the, the, the RT treatment and its benefit on the emotional and physical um, well-being. And um, also the, the, the problem of um, the welcoming and the, and the um, hospitals and health facilities that all the stuff, uh, uh, those driving force that prevent people on, on ART treatment to remain on, uh, on treatment. Next, next slide, please. Uh, it's not been, uh, no, I don't think it's the, the slide. Can you go to the previous slide? Okay, good. Next slide. No problem. Um, so does those findings, um, um, from the focus group and all this stuff, lead panels to design a media campaign to increase the awareness on ART treatment and addressing the root cause that prevent PLHIV from HIV, um, HIV viral load suppression. And we designed the, the TOC, the theory of change, um, by um, identifying the problems, the barriers, and what kind of interventions that we, can, we could make, and uh, what kind of outputs and outcome and the impact of our campaign. So um, you can uh, just uh, take a look of uh, the, the problems, the low attention with HIV-related stigma and discrimination, like I said before, uh, towards PLHIV, um, the, the barriers or the, the stigma and discrimination as well, the internal migration, um, the politic turmoil, and uh, the kind of interventions that we made that we are still um, um, making on, on the field to reduce stigma and discrimination and inform um, the, the people on the availab uh, availability of ART treatment nationwide and what kind of the outputs so that the general population can be aware of the issue of discrimination and stigma, which is very important and is very, very big in Haiti, the issues of stigma and discrimination against PLHIV and, um, and make sure that the PLHIV are very sensitized about the importance of, to women or ART um, 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 despite of, you know, stigma and discrimination, and that the medical staff are becoming more supportive of uh, PLHIV, that the health facilities in the hospitals are more welcoming for, for those folks. And uh, for the outcome, make sure that we have less discriminatory behavior um, 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 towards PLHIV, and uh, the PLHIV on ART treatment can remain on treatment and have knowledge and promotion the benefits of, uh, of uh, VLS and enhance. And as impact having a high percentage of PLHIV, um, either newly enrolled or already on treatment to achieve and maintain durably undetectable viral load. Next slide, please. So, so Panos designed and launched the, the first phase of the um, U equals U um, campaign, uh, which is funded by PEFO and USAID, with the goal to increase the awareness and ART treatment and addressing the root cause that prevent PLHIV to um, achieve um, uh, viral load suppression. So the program is being implemented with um, the, the National AIDS Control Program 
of PNLS in French, which is a directorate of the Ministry of Public Health and Population, that we're working closely with the Ministry of Health and Population in Haiti to design and implement the, the, the communication materials. Next slide, please. This is our audience segmentation. Um, what, what, what are the people that we, um, um, we target um, in the, um, this campaign? First of all, the PSIV, um, so they can achieve undetectable viral loads, viral load to women on ART treatment, the patient, um, we are related with for non adherence to anti anti which were very viral. The last to follow up to resume on RT treatment, the medical staff, like I said before, to be more welcoming in the hospitals and health centers uh, and the general population to, to address the stigma and discrimination towards PLHIV. Next slide, please. Okay, this is our media strategy. So, um, Paros is um, 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 using the, the the traditional media and social media in Haiti because in Haiti, um, uh, people are listening to, to radio like twenty four seven, and we have uh, um, pretty pretty much high percent percentage of people using social media, like forty percent now. So, to reach our audience, we use um, the radio, the TV, and social media, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, to broadcast our programs. And uh, also, um, Palos is working with um, and, and media, or social media influencers, artists, um, famous musicians to get the message out to the different components. So when we um, conduct the focus group with um, PLHIV, they actually identify some artists that they think can be positive um, um, action to, to them. So they added to the specific media influencers or social media influencers or musicians to say if i'm listening to music from this guy from this specific guy it can move me so if you want to um do a video spot or a psc um public service announcement and you use um this specific female audience or male audience i'm going to take my time to listen to him so um so we pick some social media influencers and famous musicians to be the ambassador of 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 the campaign of the government so we also work with um um, um the the fit base leaders across the, the the departments when i say fit base leaders in haiti are like the pastors the priors and the voodoo priors as well because haiti is very religious so the, those folk when they talk there are a lot of people um who are actually listen to them so we work closely with the fit base leaders it was a department to reach out to um, our audience. So, like I said, the audience and influences have been chosen following the focus group um, head with the, the PLHIV. And, um, and for the fifth base leaders, Panos is using to work with, uh, with uh, um, this part of people in Haiti, and, uh, and it works, works very well for us uh, as now. And uh, the, the fit base leaders has uh, a strong influence in the society. Um, so Panos is working with them and, uh, and we have good results um, as, at this moment. Okay, but now um, let's say about the pre-testing. We um, pre-test the media materials with the, the, the PLHIV group from a different social economic and education background. And they um, listen to the listening to the, the, the programs, watching the, the sport and the PSA, and they, they provide some feedbacks that help us to um, um, improve the content uh, before um, going to um, broadcasting. We also pre-test all our, our materials with medical staff, and all the input have really contributed to better produce well uh, tailored media contents for each segment of the audience that we also um, um in the uh, audience um, segmentation next jenny just to to mention that you have just two minutes left so we just want to make sure uh we we um maybe not read each bullet but um yeah because now you're getting to the heart of what people really want to know about so just manage your time thank you johnny oh, okay thank you thank you Jackie. 
so this is our, our media which in coverage. So you can just take a look on what kind of materials that we have produced uh, for this book with um, ADP, LHIVs, um, the, the audio spot and PSC, and um, the, the numbers of people that uh, are sensitive to um, different media and non media activities, um, like music festival, faith based gatherings, um, et cetera, and um, the, the kind of screening of videos but that we, we have made um, um, across the department, and um, uh, which uh, in terms of participants. Next plan. Um, this is one of uh, um, really key tools that we use to raise awareness on the ART treatment. This is like a, 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 a media show, Info Sida or Info HIV ends, um, which is a, a live streaming on social media and uh, which is very, very popular in, on, on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, we uh, have as guests, PLHIV organizations, medical doctors, and USAID and PEP for IPs um, for, for this show. This is a weekly show on the, that provides every information about the, the, the HIV and Haiti and all this stuff. Next. Okay, um, well, in terms of lesson learned during the first phase of, uh, of uh, the campaign, let me remind you that we're working now on the second phase. We actually learned that spending time to talk with PHRV and either through focus group or other interpersonal activities, prior to design the materials led to achieve message, um, the message audio fit. And the SBC message makes everyday health partners um, really easier in ensuring the continuity of treatment. And, and the message as well is well um, received based on positive feedbacks that we had during the, the kind of evaluation. Next. So, um, so now we're working on the second phase and from those lessons, we, we know that um, we, when we get in more actors from PLHIV Association involved in the material design and production, and we can have um, materials more tailored to our audience. And when we put more emphasis on non-media activities, like I said before, like music festival or faith gathering, um, faith-based gathering activities, we can um, reach out to more people across the country that have not access to internet or, 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 or traditional media. And we, we, we're going to continue to work with um, the fifth based organizations to get this particular group having a better understanding of the importance of ERT for um, PLHIV in the community. Next. This is one of our billboards, big billboards that we put in, uh, in some region in Haiti, um, talking about the, 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 the ART treatment uh, with uh, uh, a slogan. So um, the U equal is the, the translation in Creole for U equals U and the dictum equal and transmissive. So U equals U is translated in Creole to E equals E equal E, equal e which is the, the campaign name. Thank you all. Thank you. Godfrey. So over to Godfrey, sorry, go ahead. Hello, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, Happy New Year to all of you. I'm glad to be here today. So my name is Godfrey Monaculia. I work for uh, USID to Long Life Project uh, and I, uh, uh, of which TMAC Tanzania is a sub to FHI 360. Next. So today I'm going to share with you the experience of uh, designing and implementing uh, a Friango campaign, uh, which was implemented, uh, is still being implemented in Tanzania since uh, 2018. Uh, just to give you a country context of Tanzania, so uh, 
uh, HIV uh, is still a bad in Tanzania. And by the time we were developing this uh, campaign, uh, uh, it was still high among women, 6.4%, uh, whether 3.1% for men. And uh, many were less likely uh, uh, to know the HIV status because they would not, not go for HIV uh, testing. And um, uh, there are also uh, uh, an estimated 91% uh, of PHIV were uh, on antiretrovirals. Uh, however, uh, of those uh, only uh, 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 they, I, I mean, only fifty, uh, only fifty-two uh, percent of people are living with HIV AIDS were uh, aware of the HIV status. So uh, issues like uh, uh, there are still uh, uh, lim limits, limitations, challenges on people accessing ART and many other HIV services. Next, so. The Fryangu campaign was a national test and twist campaign, and uh, Fryangu means my happiness. And the campaign aimed to tackle uh, the challenges of uh, behavior on HIV testing, along with the immediate start of ARVs. But also, uh, we wanted to increase awareness uh, and uptake of the new test and treat services at the national level, but also uh, develop. Uh, a, a collaborative means uh, through the government and other implementing partners. And this project was funded by USAID and uh, through the coordination of HIV, uh, FHI 360 and uh, the government of Tanzania through National AIDS Control Program. Next. Next slide, please. So, uh, as I've said earlier, uh, the, 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 the goal of the campaign was to uh, support the, the paper, uh, paper priorities in terms of the 1995-1995. And uh, so, uh, the theoretical framework for the campaign was we applied a, 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 theory, a theoretical model called the added model, uh, which addressed behavior determinants at different levels. One, was to increase the desire or demand for health behaviors, products, and services. For instance, HIV testing, ART initiation, viral testing, et cetera. But also, uh, we wanted to move audience from the intentions to act uh, to move, uh, to take actions uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, if going for HIV testing or immediately starting ART uh, initiation, but also, uh, we wanted to support behavior maintenance, uh, for instance, issues of adherence to ART, but also to facilitate individual and community uh, 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 issues uh, and advocates for change. As, so, as you can see from the added model, it has a combination of uh, all the key structures at individual, at the societal, at community, but also trying to look at structural issues that may affect uh, uptick of a particular services, a, 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 for this case, HIV services. Next. So uh, the campaign guiding principles were more participatory. Uh, as you can see, uh, it, it, uh, there was uh, an engagement of government stakeholders. Uh, the implementing partners uh, from different cadres, from the service delivery partners to SBC partners, but also uh, there was an engagement of beneficiaries. Uh, these were our target groups and who are uh, actually benefiting from the program. But also it was consensus based because the prioritization of behavior and activities was, were agreed by stakeholders. As I've mentioned above, every, every individual uh, uh, had a consensus on uh, what uh, behaviors ne needed to be prioritized, but also it was uh, uh, developed from the audience's viewpoints uh, as, I, 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 as they, it was informed by insights from the uh, uh, participants, I mean the target groups, and also uh, for this case, uh, emotional drivers 
real uh, were used to drive this campaign. But also it was evidence-based uh, and it was guided by theories and data which actually informed uh, programmatic decisions on how we move forward with the campaign. Next. So uh, the triangle campaign was guided by uh, 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 emotions, I might say. Uh, so we used emotions actually uh, to uh, drive the campaign. And uh, the creative concept, my happiness, uh, was the one which guided the development of materials from the uh, mass media level uh, and community-based activities. So each material had a reflection of what my happiness mean uh, in terms of uh, uh, what actually drives uh, people to go for HIV testing or to early start a, a ARTs. So those uh, fact issues like uh, uh, issues of feeling belonging to a family, uh, feeling in, in control of your life, and as well as the reinventions actually guided on how these materials were, were, were developed. Next. Next slide, please. So uh, as I've said earlier, Friangle campaign uh, uh, was meant to position ART as a solution to fears around what life would be uh, after being tested positive for HIV or uh, having HIV positive diagnosis. But also we try to align um, immediate use of ART as a way for individuals to take control of their lives and future but also allowing them to belong, reinvent themselves and achieve their hopes. Uh, so there were some several programmatic adaptations to the program. As I said earlier, previously we used uh, 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 mass media, uh, uh, also community-based activities and so forth. But then as time went and following the uh, uh, data uh, that we are receiving from the, uh, the program, there are several pro, uh, programmatic adaptations made within the campaign to effectively reach audience through targeted approaches, including the development deployment of treatment advocates who were more appropriate and relatable for PLHIV and for loss to follow clients. So uh, we trained a number of treatment advocates uh, within the uh, PEPFA high volume sites, which were uh, 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 33 high volume sites. And so these treatment ad advocates conducted a uh, one-to-one uh, -one counseling, counseling with fellow PLHIVs. Uh, and those who had lost, uh, uh, were not going back to, uh, to services. So uh, following the implement, but this, these activities also uh, were also uh, integrated with other activities like uh, the mass media activities, specifically use of community radio stations at the community level, who were developing these kind of uh, uh, programs of which PLHIV were also, and experts were invited to speak about uh, uh, HIV issues, especially uh, 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 doing stuff like viral load monitoring, uh, ART adherence, and many other issues that are related to PLHIV, including index testing. So in doing so, uh, we achieved a uh, 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 great, uh, we trained so many, uh, uh, treatment advocates, and we are able to reach uh, 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 a quiet number of PLHIV as well as uh, both male and female, but also uh, so many, many, many clients who uh, were lost to follow then went back uh, to services, as, as you can see from the table here, uh, 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 what it shows. But also, uh, when we started this, pro uh, uh, before the implementation of this activity, uh, uh, via roads, uh, uh, suppression was, was low. By then, soon after we started this uh, uh, treatment advocacy intervention for the Frank campaign, you might see the curve going up uh, compared to the previous months that we are, uh, uh, this activity was being implemented. So this shows uh, actually that um, uh, uh, engagement of PLHIV uh, as treatment advocates within the uh, HIV containment uh, helps actually. Oh, uh, sorry to interrupt, but there's two minutes left. Okay, thank you. 
So what's the, uh, can you go to the next slide, please? So uh, what we have learned through this program is that uh, this campaign is one of the prime example of how we blend the blend of evidence-based research uh, and emotion targeted messaging and a strong collaboration from government partners uh, can reach target audience for the purpose of contributing to the behavior change, but also theories and data uh, will guide you as you are, you are, you are developing your SPC intervention uh, and if determine if you are making any milestones. But also the use of treatment advocates for this case, I think helped a lot in terms of bringing back lost clients into services. Next. Uh, so thank you. Beloved, over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Beloved. I'm the uh, project coordinator for men's health services uh, from ANOVA, and I'm accompanied by Dr. Albert, who is the technical lead and um, head of HTS uh, from ANOVA. Um, we run a project called Health for Men. Uh, next slide. So just to give a broad uh, background, Health for Men is an ANOVA based program uh, that was established in 2009 um, uh, and it was funded by USAID before the APES grant um, to specifically provide services to men. So we started in the city of Johannesburg, uh, but we have since uh, grown into four other districts across three provinces in South Africa. We are working with the um, Department of Health to ensure um, HIV epidemic response among men in line with um, the 1990 strategy. So our main aim is to provide quality men's health services through setting up of health for men's centers of excellence uh, or men's clinics and pilot uh, interventions. So we provide a wide range of services um, in, among them primary health care, community HTS, workplace, and several others, including MENA and coaching pillow. So today uh, the focus is on coaching pillow model. Next slide. Next slide. So um, the whole the one before the one before yes. So the whole concept of men's health or health for men is premised on the theory of change, where we seek to change the behavior of men and uh, ultimately increase the uptake of services among men with the end, uh, end goal of um, achieving a, a, a HIV epidemic control. Of note here is, um, is that um, even though today we are discussing coaching pillow, it is to be understood within the broad um, context of men's health and not in isolation. Um, though itself is premised on the theory of change and that will be covered late uh, in the presentation. Next slide. So um, a baseline assessment was done and several gaps in terms of HIV epidemic um, response um, is concerned and of note is that men are lagging behind women in terms of uh, HIV response. Um, if I draw your attention to the second 90, you'll see that 92% of uh, men know their HIV status with only 61% on treatment compared to 95 and 75% for women. So um, if we are to achieve um, 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 HIV epidemic control, it is important that we, 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 we attend um, um, to the gaps um, um, in terms of um, bridging the gap between men and women. Next slide. So, uh, question building in particular, it is an evidence-based intervention that is informed by a series of studies that were done by a PSI and Ipsos uh, between 2018 and 2019. And this study was done in Pumalang and kwazulu Natal province in South Africa. Um, the study employed a mixed methods approach comprising of uh, qualitative and quantitative research. So the qualitative component of it um, uh, sought to identify uh, beliefs and attitudes and the broad psychosocial factors that um, 
hinder uh, or promote access to HIV services among uh, men. And this was then followed by um, a quantitative survey, which basically um, sought to look at how uh, different categories of men experiences barriers and um, the type of support and messaging that may be needed to, to change that. So data analysis was then done, um, followed by a pilot study that was done in 2020 uh, in KZN and in Pumalanga. Uh, so after the, the pilot study, uh, then implementation was done. Next slide. So um, these are the qualitative findings from the study. Um, um, the main key takeaway is that men uh, experience both practical and psychosocial barriers. I think um, to sum it up, there are three key points that I would want to bring to your attention. One, that um, the barriers which men experience are not only practical, they are psychological, they are social, they are emotional. So we need a holistic approach to, to attend to those. Um, number two, that um, the main barriers which men experience are mainly rooted in the fear that uh, HIV will pose a huge burden, which will result to, into a loss of several things, which men um, uh, consider as of value. Uh, we look at uh, things like sense of autonomy, sexual pleasure, uh, you know, loss of income, and, and several others. And three, what came up through um, uh, the, um, from the study is that uh, in order to overcome these barriers, men need something that they can relate to, and that can be in something uh, like a man living with HIV. Next slide. So the quantitative um, um, findings informed um, a psychographic and MENA-based segmentation as shown, as shown on the slide. The main uh, purpose of psychographic segmentation was to mainly um, understand um, various attitudes and beliefs uh, as well as behaviors of different categories of men uh, as shown on the slide. Um, on the other hand, MENA, just, MENA a gender based segmentation uh, mainly sought to, to then look at how these different categories of men experience these um, uh, barriers across, um, uh, you know, along um, 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 their HIV gene. I think what is important uh, to take here is that whether you are Mr. Green or Blue or Tell, you may be at any of the uh, stages of HIV um, a journey. You can be a Tsepo, you can be um, a, a Jabu or Sipo or Tando. Um, and um, in as far as coaching people is concerned, um, uh, key to note that the coaches every single day are looking for these five types of men and they are working on those um, every day. Um, next slide. So um, in response to the needs identified uh, by, by the study, Coaching Pillar was then designed. So Coaching Pillar is a peer support model that employs men uh, who are stable on ART to support other men. Um, uh, so these are men who are either newly diagnosed or they're struggling to stay on treatment. So uh, this model is a departure from the old uh, case management model in that it draws primarily from lived experiences uh, in advising and supporting men. I think it's important to note that. So these coaches are working in um, health for men centers of excellence and MENA implementing facilities and, uh, and, and they, are, um, they are primarily um, working in communities where they, they live. So their primary focus uh, is basically to, to, to intensify adherence support, but through experience, um, they, we also use these coaches to mobilize men for HTS and link those that um, are positive uh, to treatment. Uh, because they are actually from the communities where they live, we then go an extra mile to use the very same coaches to address several other psychosocial barriers uh, that uh, hinder access to, to care among men. Next slide. So the, the theory of change for this particular intervention is that if men have got the right a source of support uh, for, uh, to cope with HIV diagnosis, uh, uh, men will then um, develop, uh, they will understand the benefits of, of treatment, develop motivation and, and resilience to overcome uh, their fears and, and barriers. So if men uh, develop um, motivation, understanding and resilience, then these men are going to be initiated on treatment, develop a stable routine, and will also be in a position to disclose their status to their loved ones. 
So this will then ultimately uh, help us uh, to sustain men on treatment um, and achieve viral load suppression. So other modules that inform um, coaching pillow are listed uh, below there for those who need um, a further reading. So, but in short, uh, this is basically what we are trying to achieve through a coaching pillow. Next slide. Next slide. Right, so as I said, the model was uh, piloted in Mpumalang and KwaZulu Natal. Let me uh, now draw you, your attention to the pilot results. Um, so um, during the seven months uh, of pilot, um, the model achieved 96% linkage to ART with a, a corresponding 95% um, retention onto K. Next slide. So following the uh, pilot uh, study, ANOVA was privileged to be the first organization in South Africa to implement the model. We then uh, took it up and then integrated it in, into our men's uh, health program. Uh, to date, um, coaching pillow is rolled out uh, by six other PFA partners in the country. Um, we have employed a participatory monitoring um, and evaluation approach. So they are um, multi-stakeholder. Sorry to interrupt, but this is your two minute mark. Okay, fine. So then there are ongoing participatory uh, sessions with partners where we reflect on lessons learned and we also do uh, reflective sessions with um, uh, coaches as well. Next slide. So uh, this is how we've uh, integrated um, a coaching pillow into our men's health program. Uh, of note that coaching pillow is a bridge between our community and, and facility-based interventions as shown on the slide. Next slide. So these are the outcomes um, um, from um, coaching pillow since uh, for quarter one and quarter four in 2021. Uh, to date, we have recruited about 5,000 men and 97% of those uh, are retained onto care. Uh, we have tested 11,542 uh, with a 15% yield and 98% of these um, have been linked uh, on treatment. Next slide. So the success of coaching pill in South Africa has been made uh, possible through multi-stakeholder collaboration as shown on the slide. Most of the uh, stakeholders that you see over there um, are involved in technical work, uh, strategic planning, technical support, resource mobilization. Um, but um, what I would want to emphasize is the importance of uh, involving community level stakeholders for, for successful implementation on the ground. And of note, it's also important to make sure that uh, you also include uh, coaches as well for the whole model is premised on the concept or principle that nothing about us without us. So coaches are also important uh, to help inform um, um, uh, further improvement to the model. Next slide. So what have we learned uh, from coaching pillow? Um, the existence of uh, health, for, health for men centers of excellence provided a fatal ground for coaching pillow rollout. And um, what worked to our ad advantage is that when coaching pillow was introduced, we already had a um, men's health program that was running and um, this then uh, provided a, a strong foundation um, for, for successful implementation. As a peer-led SBC intervention, coaching pillow has been effective in increasing uh, knowledge and attitudes of men. Um, to take ownership over their health. Yes, a coaching pillow, uh, I, I can tell you, uh, since we started rolling out this, uh, the um, uptake of men's health services through our, um, our men's clinics and um, uh, all our facilities where we are working is, has since been increasing. Training and capacity building and continuous monitoring of coaches uh, and nursing staff is key. So uh, remember, these coaches are mainly men living with HIV. So in principle, they are just lay people. So as we continue to adapt and um, um, the model uh, uh, based on experiences and, and lessons learned, training become essential. Very important to make sure that nurses and, and other categories of staff are also trained as well uh, for, for effective implementation. Yes, of course, stakeholder engagement and buy-in across all levels, um, um, it, it's also key, um, right through from national government and all implementing partners. But most important also, do not forget uh, to, to, to include coaches, uh, and community level uh, uh, stakeholders like your councillors, traditional leaders, and uh, private sector, all these are key if we are to get results. Um, uh, use of Men Connect, Facebook, WhatsApp, and all uh, social media platforms. Uh, because um, some of the work is done on these platforms, 
um, what we are learning so far is that uh, this is also a promising gateway to develop HIV, digital HIV, HIV strategy for SBC communication. Um, Participate or MNE, I think it's, it's linked to the, to the one on stakeholders. I think it's also important that all stakeholders um, um, are included. Lastly, coaching pillars and SBC model can be uh, also adapted for, for interventions in men and, and, and girls and other uh, sorry, uh, population uh, categories. I, I, I think I can, um, uh, what I can share is that um, so far, um, 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 discussions have, are already starting to image on having things like female coaches, uh, MSM coaches and all that uh, based on the successes that we have learned so far on, on the current existing model. Next slide. Yeah, so for further correspondence, um, uh, those are um, 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 my contact details. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, beloved and team. And thank you to all the presenters. That was fantastic. Um, we'd like to kind of wrap up with doing a bit of a reflection on some of the lessons that we've learned then from these presentations. Next slide. Okay, so what are the key principles of effective SBC? Well, here's a checklist that we came up with on the things that we need to do to try to get it right. And they're all rather simple. First one is we need to clarify the desired behaviors that we're looking for. Do we want improvements in disclosure? Are we after improvements in adherence, uptake of services? What are the behaviors exactly? Secondly, segment the audiences. Are we talking AGYW, adult men, uh, children? Who are we targeting? Third, use best available evidence on the barriers and drivers. And while we would like to do formative research, sometimes and most of the time that's not really possible given the, the financial constraints. So use what's out there. We've been almost 30 years into this epidemic. There's a lot that we know about HIV related behaviors, attitudes, draw upon that literature. Then recognize the role of emotions, non-health and non-conscious drivers and social norms. Um, uh, beloved, you've been talking about that. There's a whole universe of sociocultural, structural and mental factors that in impact our behaviors and really prevent people from doing what you might call rational decision-making. Uh, we've got to come to grips with that whole universe um, in which these behaviors are taking place. Develop your theory of change. It doesn't need to be very complicated. Get the right expertise at the table, people who can help. And if you're working with people living with HIV, get them there. They're key stakeholders in everything that we're doing. Use mutually reinforcing interventions. Kind of think of it as wraparound approaches. We talked about pledges, posters, um, radio discussion programs. All of those can reinforce each other. Pre-test the materials with the target audiences. That's important. Don't just pre-test it with somebody who's related to the organization really for the consumers of our services that we need to pretest the materials with. Allocate sufficient budget. It's not an easy one. A lot of discussion about the financial implications of doing this more and doing it in a better way. And finally, plan for and implement monitoring and evaluation. Very key. We haven't done enough of this in the past, and we're still trying to build an evidence base uh, this far into the epidemic. So we need more monitoring. We need more evaluation of our SBC work. Next slide. Okay. And here's a, a simple systematic approach. You start with identifying the behaviors, the target population, underpinning the outcomes that you're after. Then you identify the behavioral determinants based on the available or additional evidence, what's out there and what you can do to learn more. Draw on frameworks and develop a theory of change, how these inputs are gonna to lead to outputs and desired behavioral changes. 
design and test the intervention, and then implement, monitor, and continually adjust. And this framework probably sounds a lot like things you already know and already do. And we're trying to simplify it so that we're all on the same page knowing that implementing SBC work is not that difficult. Next slide. Okay, and here are our key three takeaways. We're all talking about client-centered approaches, patient-centered approaches. Well, knowing who those clients are, what they believe, what they feel, what they value, what they think about life, what they think about the future. Collecting insights is really foundational to this client-centered approach that we all want. SBC can be applied at all points along the HIV continuum. Jacqueline mentioned early on that it was traditionally associated with prevention work early on in the epidemic, but it's applicable right across the HIV continuum. And finally, it can produce those measurable results for improved HIV outcomes and sustaining epidemic control, but we need to do more monitoring, more evaluation, more writing up and building that evidence base as we move forward. Next slide. Okay, thank you. Um, before we move to our Q&A, we have a little poll follow up at the end. Uh, please all put in your answers. And I believe Susan will wrap it up for us. Absolutely. So we have about 30 seconds left on the poll. And I'll share the results as soon as it's done. Thank you, Susan. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and share results. There we go. So hi, everybody. Uh, we're we're going to take the Q&A as a team. Um, just to note, uh, we already started our uh, session with a high, uh, with a pretty good indicator that most people felt uh, or believed that SBC has a role in treatment. And uh, however, a small number said they disagreed. We see that we have convinced everybody. Uh, so uh, we have moved the needle. So to a certain extent, we've uh, we've been successful. So thank you again. I think these were amazing presentations. We had to really manage time, uh, and and that's uh, that's a little uh, challenging. Um, and so there, I'm sure, had we had more time, you would have gotten into to the the wonderful details uh, around these uh, these approaches. So you, if you open up the Q and A, uh, there are some answered questions from um, from our members. I think one common theme was yes. Well, we mentioned it's not in COP guidance. Um, you know, we are believers here and we are working on this advocacy. It's a, it's a work in progress. Uh, you know, budgets are going to be, um, are going to be tight or flatlined, especially in countries where you're going, to, you're at epidemic uh, control. So it's really behooves us to really how we position and how we frame SBC is not competing against uh, uh, you know, interventions or clinical services, but how they support it. And so our discourse, how we talk about SBC is really, uh, is really critical. Um, maybe a question, we're gonna leave this open to our panelists, apart from improved services uptake and, and use, what are the other strategies that we use to measure long-term behavior change? 
Um, already, I think improved services and uptake in youth is already a behavior. So I'm not, um, I, I'm opening it up to uh, Godfrey, Johnny, or Beloved to see if they have any answers to, to offer on this. And any of, of course, of our other panelists. Uh, we have a, a nice cohort here. Any thoughts from anybody who's able to, to uh, take this live? Any thoughts on that? I'm gonna open it up. Uh, so thank you, thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, just to, to respond on, on Gordon's Peterson at uh, Gume question, on uh, he asks, apart from improved services uptake and utilization, how, how, and what other strategies do you use to measure long-term behavior uh, change? What other strategies? Um, I think. Uh, uh, changing uh, norms, norms can be a long-term uh, change in terms of behavior. Like uh, uh, right now, uh, ART, uh, someone seeing a, a, a PHIV using ART is not a, an issue. And some uh, uh, PHIV uh, individuals don't uh, hide their medications anymore. So that can be one of the uh, where we, we, we see changes in terms of um, how SBC programming uh, can change the behavior. But also in terms of uh, issues of stigma uh, and so many other issues like in Tanzania uh, for people living with HIV AIDS have, uh, have been reduced so much. So we think it's because of uh, a, a, a continuous uh, use of SBCC at um, mass media level, uh, but also through the community intervention, we think uh, that also uh, uh, is one of the means of how we can still measure uh, SBCC. So to me, um, uh, attitudes, um, uh, norms uh, are some of the issues that we can see as we measure the, our SBCC interventions. Thank you. I love it. I, I really appreciate um, this kind of intermediate outcome, right? A, and proxy measure of not hiding your medication, uh, which is, of course, if the medication is hidden, uh, out of sight, out of mind, you don't have your, your visual cue to take your, your medication. Uh, and, you know, we've heard of sometimes clients who hide uh, their medication at a neighbor's house. Well, the neighbor's not there that day. You can't take your medication, right? So I, I really find that's an interesting one. And the social norms, of course, measuring norms and stigma, um, uh, that is more a longer term. So really appreciate that uh, suggestion and hoping that uh, offer that answers uh, Gordon's question. Um, I'd like to move on to uh, Bacha's um, question. Um, there is a feedback survey, which I would wait just a minute before you can get to that. Um, how can we bring a contextual issues into SBC policies addressing SBC, especially at the local level, but in, in most cases, HIV impacts the local communities uh, more than uh, the sort of wider, the, the leader or the elite. Um, uh, unfortunately, maybe more precision would be needed. Abacha probably cannot unmute uh, themselves. Any, based on what is written, do any of our panelists, uh, whether it's speakers or other panelists, have any, um, offer any answers to Abacha's uh, question? Yeah, I, I, it's maybe about you, some clarification would be um, would, would be needed, but I think is is what you're saying is maybe there are generic uh, sort of you know policies out there, um, and how can we tailor it more to the to the local context and, and at the community level? 
I don't really have any great answers to bring to that. I'm not at the sort of local policy. Um, any, um, any other, I mean, other than ensuring that any kind of research formative work that you do uh, to get at those audience insights, that they're really shared, for example, with stakeholders and partners to, to make sure that they really understand uh, you know, the barriers and also the drivers that we're dealing with, that could be one thing. Um, Jacqueline, if you'd like, yeah. you can go ahead and unmute um, Abacha. If oh, like that, that would be great, although Abacha has started. Oh, I didn't know that was an option. Uh, Abacha, go ahead, uh, if you can, if you're willing to speak live, that would be great. Thank yes, thank, thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm able now to speak. Good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> Hello. Yes, good afternoon, Abacha. Go ahead. Good evening. This is good evening now from Juba, South Sudan. I, I, was, I was just trying to put my question in terms of like, uh, you see there are communities uh, in which the culture is so strong that even if you come with a new uh, social and behavior change strategies to break the barriers of the culture in the community is very difficult. So my question was like trying to seek for how can we engage the higher authorities in terms of policy regarding social and behavior change to affect the cultural barriers in terms of HIV care and services. Mm -hmm. um, hi, Abacha. Um, you know, the, what, you're, what you're asking is, is not an easy task, but um, I must say um, we are trying to get more community-led monitoring to be part of our programs. And in the context of that monitoring, we are trying to get the correct people to help monitor and to help advocate for what really needs to happen at the local level in the local clinics and to help raise those voices upward so that they're able to speak to the policymakers and their views can be heard. So we have to look at multiple ways in which we can raise those voices around these barriers that impact people and, and create the kind of systems that are not working for people. Yeah, thank you. Maybe this is also a point where USAID uh, can try to make an investment on. Thank you so much. No, thank you. It's, it's very important. You're right. I think uh, it's, this is John Nesiliko from Haiti. I think what we are doing in Haiti um, uh, by working with fifth base um, um, leaders in and, and local community works. So when we have, when we go to a community, we identify the fit leaders, like the, like I said in my presentation, the the, the pastors, the priors, and the voodoo um, priors as well. And um, and we work close with them, and they can talk to the population, to the to the people. And so far, it really works for us in Haiti to 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 break all the barriers, the cultural barriers, um, as it said in, in his question. So. You know, identify so, so key leaders in, 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 in those communities and, and work close with them to have the, the, the message which are to the audience can be um, very useful and, and very efficient as well. Okay. Thank you, Johnny. I totally agree with that. Faith based leaders are key, and we know in the past they can create stigma and perpetuate it but they can also uncreate it and help to be allies in this fight. So thanks for bringing that up. I think yes. Beloved, yeah, Beloved, you have a hand up. Oh, okay, um, thank you. Uh, maybe um, uh, from us uh, here in, in South Africa, um, at police level, I think uh, I'm glad to say uh, we are privileged to have the men's health uh, policy in place. Uh, I think it was signed in December. So then this provided um, the, 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 the good platform to start having men incorporated into the national health policy at a policy level, right? So the, 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 the whole um, um, operationalization of men's health services that we are doing is informed um, um, uh, in terms of the national um, uh, health uh, strategy. Um, and then uh, if you check as well, um, the, 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 in as far as incorporating the voices of our beneficiaries into into, into the program and as far as communication is concerned, 
we have got a campaign that we're running called MINA. Uh, and um, it, 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 if you check um, uh, within MINA, there are different types of men uh, that, that, uh, that have got a voice in there. And then uh, coaching pillow itself is embedded within um, the, the broad um, MINA strategy. The two are sort of like uh, intertwined, right? And um, uh, key um, uh, to, to, to coaching pillow is that the, the main uh, voice uh, at, on the ground that we see is that of a man who is living with HIV. Um, in every little thing that we do, um, we, we, we make sure that we have got a, a lot of uh, reflective sessions with them. Uh, they, they share experiences on how implementation is going, uh, what are the challenges that are, that, are, that are there, what is it that we need to do in the future to improve the service better. So um, as we are implementing, we continue to, 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 to adapt, to learn and, 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 and mold. And uh, in this all, um, we, we have taken a stance that uh, for coaching pillar, it's nothing about us without us. So I think going uh, forward, uh, that will be one of the um, best um, strategies you can also consider um, to, 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 to roll it out from your side, yeah. Great, thanks, uh, beloved. And that, that integration is really key because sometimes when we see programs, it's like SBC is here and, and clinical services are here and community is here. And it's that integration that really contributes to, to some of these outcomes. We need to wrap up. Thank you for all our uh, presenters. Any, any final word from our panelists before we hand it over to Susan? Um, thank you all for your excellent uh, participation and the great questions that came in. Uh, I'll leave uh, five seconds for any final words from our um, panelists. All right, so we have to keep us on time. Over to you, Susan, to, to take us through the last poll and close up, thank you. Perfect, thank you. So thank you again, everybody for attending and for all of our speakers. I know how much hard work this is to put these presentations together and we are so appreciative. So thank you again. I just wanted to let you know that again, this presentation and recording will be available online tomorrow morning. Uh, you'll be able to take a look a little bit closer through all of these great uh, web or slides that you saw today. And we'll also have a recording of the full webinar that you can watch and share with coworkers, anyone who wasn't able to make it today. And there's a few additional items. So I'm just gonna quickly show you there. Uh, there's a couple of additional reference slides here. So uh, when you get those, um, the presentation tomorrow, you'll be able to go through in more details and link through to the websites that some of these are mentioning. So thank you again so much to USAID and PEPFAR for putting these webinars on, making them possible. We're so proud to be here as part of ASAP to assist and have a wonderful day, everyone. Sorry, Susan, have they answered the poll? They have? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we run that one uh, a little bit earlier. So. Ah, okay, great, thanks. Thank you all. Thank you all so much, have a good day. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Bye, guys. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.